Hi friends, at the flea market you can meet anything you want from antiquities to almost working power tools. Recently, at the local flea market I bought a used screwdriver for only $15. I bought this screwdriver for three reasons. Firstly, it is almost new. Secondly, it includes a complete set with two batteries and a charger. And thirdly, who will hesitate at this price? There was a fourth reason. This isn't just a two-speed screwdriver. It has also a drilling mode with a heat. In cheap screwdrivers, this meets rarely. Good ones with this function cost a lot of money. Of course, the modest impact mechanism can't be compared with the pneumatic mechanism of a perforator. But the impact mechanism here is a nice bonus. Two ancient 14.4 volt nickel cadmium batteries are included. Batteries, by the way, have a charge indication. The condition is good. The screwdriver itself from a little known brand is quite ancient, built on the basis of the 550th motor. The tool is bulky, heavy, but such tools also should be. I have a light screwdriver, which I always use. This screwdriver will be used if you need long battery life and high torque. So we will redo it. The first goal of the remake is to replace the old nickel cadmium batteries with lithium ion. And the capacity of the new battery should be at least two to three times more, which will significantly increase the autonomous working time of the tool. And the second task is to assemble a new charger for lithium batteries. Moreover, charging should be powerful enough and able to charge the battery in a maximum of 2 hours. The battery consists of 8 lithium-ion cells of the 18650 standard. Each two banks are connected in parallel to increase the capacitance and available current, and these two pairs are connected in series to increase the total voltage. In other words, it is the 4S2P battery. Battery parameters Voltage 14.8, capacity 4000 milliamps hour. Banks are ordinary, not high current. Of course, it is desirable to use high current batteries with a current of 15 to 30 amps, for example, this type. But high current batteries in our area are painfully expensive. To order at AliExpress is impossible due to customs restrictions. Therefore, the only way to get more or less normal, not high current batteries at cheap prices is to go to service centers and buy old laptop batteries. Then they will disassemble the context process. After that, the banks are charged and discharged to determine the capacity, then checked for internal resistance and sorted. This is a very long and painstaking process if there are a lot of batteries. I already made from such known high current cans a battery for my at hand screwdriver and practice has shown that such batteries can handle quite well if the tool isn't overloaded for a long time. It is important to choose batteries with the same internal resistance and the less this resistance the better. My batteries have an internal resistance from 50 to 60 milliohms. For high current ones, it is three times less. I use these batteries from Panasonic. The capacity of each can is from 2000 to 2200 milliamps hour with a discharge current of one ampere. That is, we can say that they are practically new because brand new batteries have the capacity of about 2350 milliamps hour. The technical documentation of these batteries says they can be discharged with a maximum current of 4.5 amps for a short time up to 8 amps and a peak discharge current of 14 amps, but not more than 4 seconds. We have two cans in parallel, that is, the maximum discharge current can be up to 9 amps and short term up to 16 amps, peak to 28 amps. In fairness, I will say that I discharged the assembled battery with current up to 20 amps within 30 seconds. Process was normal, there was heating but within the acceptable range. To install the battery holders were made on 3D printer. They can be bought online for a penny and their quality will be much better. But why to buy and wait delivery if you can print it? Protection board. Without this thing it is extremely undesirable to use a lithium battery. It protects the battery from deep discharge, overcharging and short circuits. 
In my case, a cheap protection board for four lithium cells is used. The protection current of the board is 15 amps, but you can slightly increase it by reducing the resistance of current shunts. The batteries are connected using several layers of tinned copper tape. Such are used to connect solar modules. Yes, this time I decided not to weld but to solder the batteries. I have a homemade welding machine, Spotter, but alas, the nickel tapes that must be welded to batteries have ended. Hence, this solution. When soldering, the main thing isn't to overheat the batteries and solder quickly. The process of soldering one point takes only 2-3 to three seconds. I think it turned out not bad. To connect the protection board, special elastic wires in heat-resistant insulation are used. For power connections, two or three wires, 22 American wire gouge are used. The protection board is attached to the battery through an insulator. In my case, it is a FR2 or so-called Gatinex plate. Under the wires is added insulation with Captain Heat resistant tape. The board itself was fixed with a sealant. The same sealant was used to fix the solder points of wires. Next, the assembled battery went through a couple of charge and discharge cycles, all the protections were checked, and only after that it was installed in the case. The nickel-cadmium batteries of this screwdriver were sent to recycling. I kept only connection strips and an indication board. By the way, about printed circuit boards, if you are fond of electronics or you have a small production, we recommend the services of our partner, GLC, who will manufacture printed circuit boards for you of any shape, complexity and size, up to super complex six complex boards. The company can also make stencils for you for solder paste, which are made on ultra-precise laser machines. The cost of the board starts from just $2 for 10 pieces, and your order will be completed in just 24 hours. High quality boards at the lowest cost, and as soon as possible. A link to the company's website can be found in the description. Indication board is based on the operational amplifier LM324. I used to make a detailed video with a full explanation of how this board works. If you want to make an indication yourself, then I recommend watching that video. A link is in the description. The board has a variable resistor for calibration. All that reminded was to connect the board to the laboratory unit and calibrate the indicator specifically for this battery. The lab unit, as you understand, in the role of simulating the battery. Later, the variable resistor was replaced by a tuning resistor with higher resistance. The LEDs were replaced by around 3 mm, because the dimensions of the new battery didn't allow the indicator to be placed in its native place, I had to fit it in another place. The battery is ready, it works perfectly, much better than the old one. I won't touch the spare battery yet, but in the future I will either put lithium here or make a pulse source in that box to power the screwdriver from the mains. Time will tell. I charged both batteries and decided to check rotate at idle. With the old battery at the second speed, I get about 1000 RPM. Under the same conditions with the new lithium, the RPM is almost the same. The native charger isn't suitable for the new battery. In case of rework, everything needs to be replaced, so we will do it from zero. This charging is based on an iron transformer, nothing ingenious. In the charging box, settle the transformer with a rectifier. In the docking station, an indication board. A lithium-ion battery needs a charger that provides stable current and stable voltage. For example, we have a battery of four series connected lithium cans. Each need to be charged to a voltage of 4.2 volts. Multiply this by the number of series connected cans and we get 16.8 volts. To fully charge the battery, our charger should give out a little more of that. The charge current depends on the type of battery. In general, the recommended charge current for ordinary lithium-ion batteries should be half of the battery's capacity but it's allowed to charge with a current equal to the battery capacity. In my case, the battery capacity is 4 amperes hour. The nominal charge current should be around 2 amps. In search of a simple and super cheap charger, this was created. 
its universal switching power supply with stabilization of current and voltage, and this source is built on only two transistors without any microcircuits, but not always everything goes as smoothly as we would like. In theory, everything should have worked, but in practice, the current limiting system works incorrectly. And instead of sitting and adjusting the circuit, I took a ready-made 15-volt power supply and a popular 5 ampere current and voltage stabilizer board based on the XL4015 chip. This charger is actually very promising. It is universal with power up to 50 watts and it can easily be adjusted to charge almost any battery. I will definitely finish it as soon as free time appears. And now about the charger on the ready modules. There are two trimmer resistors on the stabilizer board for adjusting current and voltage. The board located at the docking station. I left LEDs stay at board because there are slots on the docking station and lighting of LEDs is clearly visible. We connect the board to the laboratory power supply and fed about 20 volts to the input. By rotating the voltage responsible trimmer, we set 16.8 volts at the output of the stabilizer. Then we close the output of the stabilizer through the ammeter and by rotating the trimmer responsible for current stabilizing, set the output about 2 amps. Next, let's go to the power supply. This is a very high quality main switching power supply. I buy them in Chinese online stores for a mere penny because they are used and taken out from something. They have high efficiency, a bunch of all kinds of protection and good stabilization. Specifically, this unit produces 15 volts at an output of up to 1.8 amps. But 15 volts isn't enough for us. We need at least 18 to 20. The current is also small. Firstly, I misled the protection system of this unit by replacing the current sensor with the lower resistance. After that, the unit began to calmly hold 2 amperes. This is a lot for him, but so far everything is fine. Voltage feedback here is realized in the classical way, using an optocoupler and a reference voltage source TL431. Nearby of this microcircuit, we have two resistors which set the output voltage. I change one of the resistors to a multi-turn trimmer and by rotation get the output voltage we need. Next, we can unsolder the trimmer, measure the resistance and replace it with a constant resistor. Also, you can leave trimmer, but it is advisable to glue the screw. Next, we join the power supply with the stabilizer board and you're done. Unfortunately, the housing in which the transformer was located is too small and the pulse unit didn't fit there. I had to find another box. This charger will charge the battery with a stable current of no more than 2 amperes to a voltage of 16.8 volts. The indicators on the stabilizer board will show the charge status. A fully dead battery will charge about 2 to 2.5 hours, which is quite good. Now let's test screwdriver's operation. I set the second speed and the ratchet into drilling mode so that it doesn't work. I hold the cartridge and pull the trigger. As you can see, the protection is triggered and the power is turned off. I won't tighten the screws. The battery is very capacious and you understand it will tighten a lot of screws. We will work with a 25mm feather-shaped drill for wood. Сверление с ударом. Drill. 
Drilling with a hit. Everything is working. I'm satisfied with remake. One drawback. I didn't use a balancing system to equalize the voltage on the lithium cans. This is of course not correct, but I have done without it before and if necessary, I will add a balancer. That's probably all. Everything you need, including links to purchase of components, can be found in the description. Please don't forget to rate this video and subscribe to my Instagram. Now I say goodbye. Until next time, with you was Kasyan TV.